Hi, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. I have, uh, ooh, I had my surgery. And just before I had my surgery, I went out into the shop with my wife and my friend, and we banged out five, the last five boxes. That makes a total of 17 of these batteries that I'm building. And we wanted to bang that out before the, the it was the day before the surgery because while I'm recuperating and stuck indoors, it's going to be a few weeks. Um, but especially at first, I can't do much. I have to keep my leg up most of the time. But that gives me an opportunity to finally build all the components to finish these batteries up. So I've been building cables. And, and I was just about to be done, and I realized... There's a lot that I have learned through this process. 17 of these things. And I want to share that with you and some of the information that you need to make this work out better. Now, all of these videos about building these batteries are on a playlist. So if you get ready to build one of these batteries, you can watch the whole playlist and watch the whole thing and then you can go back and refer to details if you need to. Or you can take notes along the way. It's up to you. And there are, in these boxes, four different wiring harnesses. Kind of five, because two of them go into an Anderson connector, but after that, you got four things. And one of them, and I'm going to give you these dimensions as we go along, one of them is this connector that goes to the BMS and then comes around under from underneath the BMS and it ties in to the T-class, the 200 amp T-class fuse. And in order to get that to lay in nicely, you want to put these small connectors. This is four, this is three four gauge wires otherwise known as 25 millimeter and these are 6 by 25 lugs that means it goes on a 6 millimeter stud and it's 25 millimeter wire in american that's quarter inch by 4 gauge on the other end you're going to have a 1 aught by 3 eighths in metric that's going to be 10 millimeters, I'm sorry, 50 millimeters by 10 millimeters. All right? Now, to get these oriented correctly, you want one of the lugs is going to be down and one of them is going to be up. Just do it like that right there. The next one. Oh, and these are 12 inches long, 300 millimeters. The next one is this little beauty, and it goes from that T-class fuse up to the battery positive. And if you do it just like this, it will lay in there really nicely. And if you look at the curve on the wire, you know, it comes off the coil. If you look at that curve and you use that curve to your advantage, this is going to sit on that T-class fuse with another one of those 50 millimeter by 10 millimeter lugs. And this is a one-aught welding wire, otherwise known as 50 millimeter. And on the other end, you're going to have a 50 millimeter by 6 millimeter or one-aught by quarter inch that's going to go on your battery positive. And so if you put this together with that little curve like that, with this lug facing down and this lug facing up, then when it comes around, it will be facing down like it should. It'll have just the right curve on it to fit in that box. Really neat. Done the thinking for you. The length on this one, mm, can I remember? 12 and a half inches? Sure, let's measure it just to make sure. Nope, I'm sorry, y'all. 14 millimeters, I mean 14 inches. That's going to be uh, four, uh, 
350 millimeters. All right. The next one goes from the BMS, the back of the BMS, and it comes up to the battery positive. And it's going to be, I think this is the one that's 12 and a half. Oh, sorry. I was wrong again. 14 inches again, 350 millimeters. Silly, right? And on each end, and if you see the orientation, one is down and one is up, and it's going to be that same 50 millimeter by 6 millimeter lug or one aught by quarter inch. Once you, if you're doing multiples, get one of them made up of each one, confirm that it's going to work really well in your box for you, and then lay it out in front of you and just recreate it over and over. All right. These next two wires I'm going to show you, that, that's, that's the easy ones. These next two I'm going to show you are the ones that go into the Anderson connector. And this black one isn't too tough. Surely this is the one that's 12 and a half. Yep, 12 and a half inches, okay? 312 millimeters. And it has an Anderson connector lug on one end and a 50 millimeter by 6 millimeter on the other end. And when this one is down, that goes on, this, this goes on to the back of the BMS. And when it goes on to the back of the BMS and it wants to go up into this Anderson connector, the way you're going to do that, I call this the flat side. The other side has a little nipple on it. On the flat side, you put that flat side up and you put this one down. And that will orient it correctly. And if you want that curve to help you, you do it in this orientation. And what that's going to do is make it to where it goes into that, onto that BMS and up into that Anderson connector in the right way to make it work for you. It will go into this side of the Anderson connector and the Anderson connector will go in like this into the BMS. Now here's the tricky one. The other side of that Anderson connector is three four gauge wires. While I'm on the subject of four gauge wire, I love this stripper right here. If you're going to do a bunch of these big wires, get one of these Nipex, Nipex, Knip, Knipex. Okay, it's German. It's probably Nipex. I had a little German, but I've slept through most of it. But I think that would be pronounced Nipex. Correct me in the comments, I'm sure. But uh, this works really well for large gauge wires. It does not work for this four gauge wire. And Dang it, if I didn't result, resort to old school, and I have done a lot of these, you can really get into trouble stripping this wire with a pocket knife. But if you have done a million of them, or in my case, I don't know, there's 12 for each box. Of this four gauge wire and there's 12, 12 strips for each box and then there's going to be 17 boxes I've done that's a million isn't it if you do it gently you'll get it to where you've cut through but not all the way there's a little bit of insulation left you might even have to trim it just a little but I have done, been able to do this without damaging the conductors and when I do these strips, no matter how which size strips I do, and there are there is going to be a stripper that does four gauge, twenty five millimeter wire easily. Help me out, y'all. Point me to it. Now that this project is done, I didn't find it. I can find wire size. I can find up to to ten gauge wire real easy. Lots of strippers for that. This one will do it. Sure.
10 gauge all the way to 20. Great stripper, by the way. Made by Klein, in case you're doing a bunch of small wires. Works great. Grabs the wire, strips it off. Real good. But this one, I use a pocket knife. And when I do it, I leave the insulation on until it is time to put it into the lug. And that way you don't bump into it and fray wires. So here's the tricky one. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this video for you, when you're putting this one together, you want to put this Anderson connector lug in with the flat side up. And then these wires are three different lengths. There's a 15 inch, a 16 inch, and a 17 inch. And what you want to do is you want to put the middle wire on the bottom, the 16 inch wire on the bottom, the 17 inch wire up on top and away from you, and the 15 inch wire up on top and towards you. Okay, 15 inches, that's 375 millimeters, 16 inches is 400 millimeters, and 17 inches is 425 millimeters. I can do math. Okay, and then when you strip these wires, get them ready, strip it off. Don't bump the insulators because you don't want to fray them. You're about to shove all of this into one 50 millimeter, see right there, 50 millimeter lug. And when you get ready to do that, you got all these held in here and you're going to cheat because that bottom one's the one that's hard for you to see. So you're going to stick that bottom one out. You're going to offset it a little bit just to get it into the lug. You're going to start it into the lug. Get these other two to feed in on top. They're the ones you can see and get to. And gently work those in. Once they all get started, then you can get a little more brutal with it. And remember that first one that we shoved in there first? Well, we're going to let the others catch up to it now. And you want to go ahead and let these wires splay out just a little bit at first to get them to where all those wires can go in there nicely. And start your crimp. Last chance to get them in there tight. Start your crimp. I'm actually holding pressure on the wire in between my fingers. I've got pressure on all three of these wires. Manual dexterity. And get that first crimp on. I do all of these wires, I crimp them all twice. Once I get that crimp done, loosen it up, move it out, and do one more. Now I did not feel the need to modify these dies. If these when you get ready to do these, you want to check your die and you want to make sure that the crimp you're making is perfect and tight and crushed. And if it starts to squeeze out a little bit of that metal on the side of the die, like a little fin, you know you got a really tight crimp on there. And this one's just starting to do that. So I think this die is perfect for these three wires in this lug. If that wasn't the case and you felt like, you know, it didn't really tighten that much, what you can do is you can file or grind those dies, the faces of the dies. Let me show you. You can take that face right there and you can grind it down, put it back in there, and now it's going to close a little bit tighter and you might get that gas tight crimp that we're looking for where there is. You cut that I got that video I did. You can cut that lug and it'll look like pure copper. You will not see any strands of wire. It is pure. And that's what we're after. What we're after is we want no air to get to that joint. That's why we put this shrink wrap on because we want to seal this up. To where no air can get to that copper and slowly corrode it over time. 
Now one other trick that you need to know. These Anderson connectors, these lugs shove way up in here. If you run the insulation out to here, that looks good, right? You're not going to get it up in that Anderson connector. So drag it on back. Remember, we got a double crimp. It's going to have plenty. It's going to have plenty of grip onto this lug. When you heat it up and melt it, then it'll have enough of this exposed so that you can get it to shove up into that Anderson connector and and lock into place. Okay. So that's the tricks I know. Now, I made a video last week that I was showing you the dimensions of all those wooden boxes. It didn't come out well. I didn't publish it. I'm sorry. I'm going to do it again and give you all the dimensions on the box. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tonight. I don't know. I want you to have all the dimensions that you need. And, and when I do these videos for this box, I'm going to, the, the box videos all have a playlist. So if you're building these boxes, they all have a playlist. When you're making connections, I have a playlist for that too. Be sure, if you have made it this far into this video, you must have liked it. Did you like it yet? Like that video for me, please. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up now. This, uh, I, this project has been on hold for quite some time as I've been doing a whole lot of work outside that needed to be done. On the ranch, at home, there's lots of work that I've had to do that didn't make, I didn't make videos up because I know y'all don't like videos of me welding, and building fences, and repairing gates, and fixing cattle guards, and yeah, I know you just want to see this stuff. So I didn't make videos of it, but I had a lot of work to do. Now I'm laid up. I'm finishing up all the batteries. I'm going to have 17 batteries by the time my ankle is healed. And as soon as it is, I'm going out and finishing the solar shed. And we're going to commission this thing, and we're going off grid. All of those videos you have to look forward to, if you subscribe, hit the notification bell, you'll get it. And I've never asked you to share these videos before. You wouldn't do that, would you? Do you have a friend that's interested in me? Share these videos too. That's all I've got for you today, folks. Thank you for staying with me. I'll see you on the next one, and it won't be long.